Ben Triv, we're running out of time. We've just realised that there's like five seconds until we've got to stop doing the commentary, so let's uh, just barrel in. Triv, how are you? Uh, I'm doing all right. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Ben, how are you? Shit, mate. Fucking rubbish. Great, right, we're going. We're synced up. This is part two of Drug Stories. If you've watched part one, we did that in January. If you haven't watched that one, go back to January. Right, part two. We're starting in three, two... Oh, we're queued up to one hour and 41 minutes, so it doesn't really matter because we're going to probably merge these together and put it out as a three-hour video anyway. So, starting in three, two, one... Drugs. White coats! These were all public domain anyway, so you could probably just use the video. Okay, so we got a bus going to Belfast. That's always nice. <laughs> I like your little sync directions there. That was cool. Now there's an eye in the background. It's it's watching us. <laughs> Why is the film so manky? Why could they not get Criterion into like come and sort it out? Because it's a drug PSA. <laughs> I love that they managed to get all of the lovely lighting in the background, and then they just couldn't be bothered to light the foreground. <laughs> They had the budget for one torch. That was it. <laughs> Flashlight. I feel like we're watching some kind of like weird uh, musical. Like, this is a man who needs to do things walking to a door. Whoa, did you see that? Someone like gobbed yeah. on the film. <laughs> it was the absinthe fairy. Someone put a bogey on it. It was Norman J. Warren who was left in charge of looking after this print. <laughs> Okay, since when do pill bottles come that small? Since when are tic tacs illegal? Ah, no, you see, they're mistaking it. He's not. It's not a small bottle. He's actually twenty foot tall. Ah, he's actually drinking then how out did of a he water get such barrel. A big glass. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> Has he got a hot date tonight? Yeah, his eyebrows can kill a man at twenty paces. <laughs> a hot date with a dame. Holy shit! He started smoking. Uh oh. All oh, of a sudden, God. he burst into flame. <laughs> This film's too hot to handle, ladies and gents. Sir, he's gone from suck to blur! Dynasty 25. The sequel no one oh. asked for. So we're watching uh, The Tingler? <laughs> the I'm... LSD is loose in the theatre. Scream! Scream for your lives! <laughs> I, prefer, ah! I prefer LSD 1 through 24 myself. Those were the... I think after 25, you know, the studio interference went in, sort of started to lose its way. You know, they tried to introduce yeah. more generic elements. It just didn't work. I don't think <laughs> anybody really recovered from the fact that when they were shooting LSD 24, the uh, filmmakers got upset with the studios and put all of the prints in the back of their car and then drove off. <laughs> <laughs> that would explain the quality of the prints. Mm. Wow, look at how much he's gone downhill since taking LSD 25. I mean, his hair is slightly less parted. This, moment, neither he this is my favourite episode of the Twilight Zone. Well, this just parts my hair. <laughs> <laughs> look at I mean, look at how beard. unfocused his beard is. Oh, now, Ooh, tie -dye. now we're getting into it. Now that now the fears come in. Oh, good lord! Those are just typical uh, uh, wallpaper prints from the seventies. <laughs> now, 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 now that's what now that's what I call hallucinogenic nightmare twenty-five. Um, hey, yes. Ben, it's you and me. <laughs> I was gonna say, it looks like my postman. I feel like you're gonna say, I feel like you're gonna say, hey Ben, there's you about 25 times. That's why <laughs> over yeah, the course of and this. There's me. <laughs> you don't look, hey guys, there's me. You don't look like a smackhead, John Hurt. <laughs> so I'll have you know, smackhead John Hurt was my stage name. <laughs> I want her glasses. Yeah, those mm. are cool. Now, can you see other dimensions through those, or are they just, like, very, very bifocals? Um, they let you see everyone completely naked. They're like, completely ah, naked. They're square because society's full of squares, man. That's why they have those glasses. Yeah. That's fair. Another thing oh, hey, it's John Hurt. Another thing LSD does is it, it daubs you completely in darkness permanently. That's one of the... Yes. Huh. Uns <laughs> le the less spoken Unexpected about effects. side effect. Yeah. All of the uh, filmmakers involved in this production took acid and as a result could not be asked to light this film. <laughs> hey look, that bench is stoned. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh... LSD makes you annoying as fuck? <laughs> well, I don't Just go know to your local pharmacy. Hello, I would like some lyosergic acid, please. <laughs> Certainly, sir. Would you like some vodka with that? <laughs> By all means. And can I have my usual supply of cocaine, please? And the missus does have a migraine. 
Damn it, I'm all for coke, I'm all for cigarettes and booze, but I will not stand for LSD. <laughs> that shit fucks you up. I still say that we all lost out, really, by not being born in the cocaine and dildos medication era. <laughs> I've I've had this I, I've had this conversation with you before, Dan. But I know I can imagine you on LSD, and it's fucking hilarious. You would be so so funny, so annoying, like very very annoying, like unbearably annoying, but funny. Like, please get out of my house, Dan. Stop talking and annoying, but funny still. <laughs> You know what? I'm not sure I believe that these are actual publications. What are you talking about? LSD in the Locker Room. My favourite erotic fiction. Ooh, In Cold Blood. Now that was a romantic comedy yeah. you could get behind. I'm looking at all the, the 60s books on the shelf. Those are more interesting than LSD, How Can We Fight It, or whatever it's called. LSD. Skull. So this disembodied voice in the you background, know- is that meant to be like the actual drug LSD? Like a like a, a manifestation of it talking or oh it's man of the hands of fate hope. and yeah <laughs> hey <laughs> the master would not approve of you taking <laughs> lsd i was gonna say it kind of reminds me of ernest borgnine in the devil's reign yes yes <laughs> you know these guys never must have worn contacts because you never touch your eye you know they're just unsanitary yeah, it's uh, it's an odd one. Man monster runs amok. You really can't blame me. Destroys entire city. It is, <laughs> Look at the size of his hand. What is this <laughs> film? What is wrong with this film and people's it's perspectives really being well out? That bloke could pick a car up in one hand. Really yeah, exactly. Like well, you know, we already saw the other guy be very, very large before, so it's just a combination of that. Hmm. Well, it's different. LSD took my face. I want it back. That's good. Not easy to describe. I will now go on to describe it. No, I'm not easy to describe. I don't know. I just I, I think we said this in the last one, but whenever I see these, it just makes it look like it's a lot of fun. <laughs> You know, I love back in the 60s when you could, like, have a bunch of science type stuff and have absolutely no purpose for it, and it still gets the point across that I am science-y. I will say, um, I think that Bill Bailey had it right in his routine when he said that LSD was like, has this mythology about it, like, oh, you you go to the land of the pixies and it's all psychedelic, and it's not. It's just, you see, like like he did, where nothing happens for four hours, and then you see someone sit in a certain way, and you go, well, that's very interesting how her knee goes on top of her other knee, like this, like a certain angle, like this, like that, how her knee's on top, for hours and hours and hours and hours forever, the end. Very dull, from the sounds of yeah. it. It's not, it's just not dull, it's just... Oh, so again, is this? Now I gotta pee. What's this voice meant to be like? Is it? Is this actually like the drug as the narrator? Yeah. So this is supposed to be the disembodied voice of LSD itself, because it keeps saying like, "One of my drops, and you'll never be the same." I love the fact that he's doing his best W.C. Fields impression, as done by Mark Prosh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if this is the voice of LSD, I'm really not interested to try LSD. No. Yeah, this is what Give happens. me good wholesome stuff like heroin. George Washington was on it. Everyone knows that. George Washington was in on the asses smugglers. Now we have proof. Well, they reckon George Washington yes, exactly. was into. They reckon George Washington was into weed. That's the that's the nice. popular yeah that's the popular conspiracy. Probably, sure, probably true, like most things. I can imagine it seemed relatively chill, apart from all that tree chopping business, you know. <laughs> and the wooden teeth, which weren't actually wooden. Yeah, yeah, you know. What was it? Maybe it wasn't that chill. <laughs> oh, that looks fun. First they took our kids. Do it on chocolate, and then we'll talk. Oh my God. Whoa. They made a head out of pastrami. That's what acid does to your kids. <laughs> It cuts your head right fucking in half. Makes you look like corned beef. (laughs) That guy's got a weird medulla oblongata. I thought he was quite acute, really. (laughs) 
<laughs> hey, they're having a dance party inside. I want a dance party inside. In sense of peppermint's color of time, who cares? This is my kind of happening, and it choose. freaks me out. Little twin. <laughs> you put the lime in the coconut and shake them both up. You put the lime in the coconut. <laughs> hey, Macarena. <laughs> What would you do if I sang out a tune? I feel like we're just singing anything now, ap- apro of any relevance or meaning to the to the visuals. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, uh, I said, hey, what's going on? <laughs> Stop! Whoa. Oh. Guys, I'm, I'm starting to feel sick. Always open. <laughs> Speaking of which, how did they know I was always open? You know what? You're, you're right. This is making LSD sound terrific. It really is. <laughs> when you consider as well that the dosage in the 60s was, was 10 times the, the strength of the dosage it is now, then, you know, it was probably amazing. <laughs> I mean, this looks fun. I could quite happily yeah. take some of this and just sit and just look at pretty colours for a few hours. We're know. about to see we're about to see Johnny Depp and Benicio del Toro drive through in a Hawaiian shirt. He's just you know he's just celebrated his trial victory. <laughs> yeah, I'm making it topical. Yeah. Dude, this makes driving sound like so much fun. I just want to do a lot of LSD and just do random house activities. I think this could be good. This could be good. Are you talking about like vacuuming and dishes or what kind of activities are we talking about? I don't know, like maybe like organizing things. Dan doesn't or do stuff. Just going into the garden. Dan doesn't do stuff, his staff do it for him. They don't think I'm physically. <laughs> <laughs> now does it's clean if Dan will Dan end up in his own garden or some poor neighbor? His cleaners do it for him. <laughs> <laughs> Rumours of my tremendous wealth have often been over-exaggerated. Dan's loaded. Well, as long as they're consistent. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it just reminded me. Um, I looked up after the end of part one. I went and chased up um, our good friend, the scientist. Mm. You know, the one who turned up in, like, every single one of the last set. Oh, yeah, what was his name? Um, um I, you know, I've forgotten his name again. That was how memorable he was. Jeff. Uh, he's dead. So that's the end of that. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I for one, I for one, am glad. <laughs> same, same. And they can't slander the dead, so I'm going to say he was he was highly inaccurate anyway. Um, but yeah, no, basically, he apparently was like a university lecturer. He just sort of worked at a local university in their science department, um, and he died about I think it was ten years ago. Let's just say his name was Craig. Yeah, we'll say his name was Craig David. Craig the scientist. Craig the Scientist David. Dr. Craig. Dr. Craig the Scientist David. Craig M.D.E. Dr. Craig M.D.E. the Scientist David. Craig O.B.E. M.D.E. O.P.P. Dr. Craig O.B.E. M.B.E. O.P.P. K.F.C. the Scientist David. P.M.S. Dr. Craig O.B.E. M.B.E. S.M.E. I think I think Triv might have I think Triv might have dropped out. Oh no, Triv has fallen away. Is she back? Guys, sorry about that. You should be in trouble. (laughs) (laughs) You took some LSD, that's what happened. I I like how we both fight. (laughs) Dan said it was fine at the same time I went, how dare you? (laughs) (laughs) Disgraceful. It's a one strike system with us. We were saying acronyms mainly, that was all you missed. Yes. Oh, okay, good. It's okay. Um, I'm going to have a gremlin bar. This is the comedy dining experience. I'm drinking water and I'm going to enjoy a gremlin bar, courtesy of Triv, who very kindly sent it all What's the a... way from her hometown. So thank you. What what is a You're welcome. What is a gremlin bar and how can I acquire one? It's the most delicious thing you'll ever put between your lips, Ben. And I'm not talking about my penis. Well, that's got some competition <laughs> though, hasn't it? What? How would it you dis- <laughs> Let's let's pretend we're doing a drug PSA on the gremlin bar. So what happens when you eat a gremlin bar? What are the horrible side effects? Within the first bite of the gremlin bar, thousands of taste receptors become alive and your eyes witness colours you will never experience before. The following six hour trip that follows will purely change your personality forever. Six there hours? is no returning from one bite of the gremlin bar. Gremlin yeah. 25? <laughs> gremlin 25? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I think it's more like a gremlin th- uh, thirty or point or thirty-two ounce, not thirty-two ounce. Uh, I, I don't know, something like that. They no, I can, I can point, certainly. They're one point eight ounces or fifty-one grams. I remember, so, I remember nice. meeting someone once who claims he could have given me LSD seventy-five. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, it was. It just turned out to be DMT in the end. So, it- well, Ben, what I can do is uh, because uh, Dan and I have a running line back and forth between us, I can make sure and send a couple of extra gremlin bars along with your name on them. That way, you get them and Dan doesn't. Okay, I'll send they're you. Delicious. Some- they're basically like they're ultra rich chocolate bars filled with caramel, peanuts, almonds, like hazelnuts. It's just. A go- very rich but gorgeous experience. I'll send you some Kinder eggs in return. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. <laughs> kinder. That's if this other, if my current package ever fucking arrives over there. Jesus. Ooh, mm. Kinder. Kinder took a doobie. <laughs> oh no, Ben has taken LSD twenty six. Me and Scubbly. He's now in the. Uh, he's now in the. Uh, t- he's now in the most Eisley Cantina. Me scribble now. <laughs> He believes he's become part Kinder Egg. Oh no! Oh, Let's man. crack him open and see what's inside. They are, they you are, don't want to know where he's keeping the toy. They are not having a good time. <laughs> he doesn't look like he takes LST regularly. Look at his hair. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, he is not having a good time. I think that someone just ripped him open, but they're saying, Oh, it was LST. It's like, no, it's the fact that you, you know, ripped open your kidneys and... You're now bleeding out or something. Well, you know what the problem Harris is? tombstones, baby. Jesus Christ. You know what the problem is? They're not set in the scene. Play some relax... Just play some, you know... Uh, you know, play some Jefferson Airplane. You'll be fine. He tried some of that... Uh, uh, he tried some of that uh, undercooked chicken. And he thought it would be awesome because that is the latest trend. <laughs> Whoa, what the fuck? This is turning into... Um, That's a heart, I think. Exorcist 2, where you see the hearts beating. <laughs> I think yeah. one of the worst places to do drugs would be in one of these LSD public information films. Um, because every time they do it, they always have a bad time. They don't need to inject him. You know yeah, what they, it seems like it. You don't, they don't need to give him an injection. You know what you do? What, are they putting him down? Is he a dog? You know what they do, right? You uh, you give him orange juice. That's, that's all it takes. Oh, nice. If someone's having a if someone's having a bad trip and you need to bring them down, orange juice, put some sugar in it, boom, done. That's that's for some reason I don't know how and why, but that just somehow immediately stops the trip. I don't know how, why it just does. This has been Ben with uh, medical. This has been med- Benical. Uh, Benical. Tested men. <laughs> I like that. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start a podcast called The Benical, where I give people advice on how to take illegal substances. Nice. Hey, it could be good. (laughs) You're listening to the. I like the idea that somebody's having a bad trip and has put this on to try and find out how to get off the trip. And two hours and nineteen minutes into the recording, they're just like, "Orange juice, yes." (laughs) You strike me. You you strike me as the kind of person, Dan, who, if you were having a bad trip, you would listen to videos of your own voice. (laughs) It makes as much sense as anything, I think. Well, Dan's quite rich, you see, so he, he, he can afford to. He gets his staff to do it for him. That does help. <laughs> gets his gets the matron to do it. For the only him. rich thing here is the delicious Betty Jane Gremlin bar. <laughs> Yay! His matron's currently feeding him the bar as we speak. Your Gremlin bars are amazing. Please sponsor the show. The Gremlin bars are on me. <laughs> the, the Gremlin. You know, funny thing is, uh, the people that run this, the Betty Jane Company, they also own a, a funeral home. So, like, you could, in theory, get um, a life-size casket full of gremlins if you wanted to. Just like the pharaohs. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm just, sold. Just like the pharaohs. <laughs> oh, dear. Mm. These people are such buzzkills. Just fucking kind take of it. Are. Just fucking take it. Shut up. <laughs> It's the lighting that makes them that big a buzzkill. That's what I was told when I first did all that. A la, a la Dennis Hopper and Easy Rider. So I'll just shut the fuck up and take it. <laughs> words of wiser words were never spoken. Let me tell you. <laughs> By any individual wearing a cowboy hat. Dude, don't take away her tube. 
but the tube is fun. That tube was just like a tube to me. Exactly. I could look through it like a telescope and, and wear it on my arm like a cast. If you somebody bastards. gave me a poster, I could roll it up and put it inside it for safekeeping. I could, let the nun I in. could make it into a fancy hat. If she was tripping, she'd probably be looking through that tube for about four hours going, whoa, it's amazing because the world looks like it's like a circle, but it's not. Whoa. Oh my, <laughs> oh my God, the world is a circle. Maybe I'm a circle because I'm in the world. <laughs> The flat earth has lied to me. And then she goes, oh, fuck, I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm going to eat my hair. Someone ring KFC immediately. <laughs> looks, looks like he came down here, took acid, got confused, ate his hands, and then shot himself. <laughs> oh, shit. Wow. He really did. Those certainly are beds. You know what? They, uh, they did surgery differently back in the day. Mm. I'll tell you what, those slabs look very comfortable. Uh, mind taking a few well, I mean, hours you, just to you lie could, down there myself. I mean, you could lay down and not have to worry about getting up to pee because, you know, you got the, the sinks there at the end. I'm only seeing positives. It looks cool as well. <laughs> they should have got Donald Pleasance to do well, this voiceover. That would have been better. <laughs> I agree. I am, I am the spirit of dark and lonely groove. Ready to trap the uncool. <laughs> The Echo is doing nothing for me. <laughs> no. Well, it was the late 60s, early 70s. Pleasance was literally doing anything. He was in Puma Man around this time, so... You know, hey, don't be kissing on the Puma Man. He could fly like a moron. <laughs> I want to fly like a moron to the sea. Fly like a moron. Let my spirit carry me. I want to fly. Oh, yeah. That seal's in the room. Like he's in the room, Dan. Can you hear him? <laughs> Fly, Mr. Right. Mr. Seal, I'm a huge fan of you. Your work. Um, what What is your favourite song, Mr. Seal, that you've sung? My name's Seal. I'm quite fond of Crazy. Um, I like the Kiss from a Rose from Batman. That was a pretty good, good. one, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm. Uh, I like my cover of Fly Like an Eagle, which I did for the Space Jam ni- brackets 1997 close brackets soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> We're back on the Satanists again. Back to Manos. No, I think that was everything. Hey, would you stop touching the eye? Do you have clean hands? <laughs> if your hands are not clean, even if you're a Satanist, cleanliness is the, next to Satanist. For the fifth time, no, I don't have clean hands. <laughs> Didn't you guys get the memo? Mask safe space. These are very, even then. very COVID-centric uh, hippies. I like it. Yes. But very respectful of the <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> I mean, look at how dirty his hands are. He can leave, like, fingerprints and shit. Of course they're dirty. Yeah. He's, a, he's a dirty, smelly hippie. <laughs> when did all of these people become Pigpen from the Peanuts cartoons? Look, he's, oh, they were always Pigpen. Look, he's just come back they're from... They're just making know, light of them. He's just come back from murdering Sharon Tate. He's got a lot on his plate, all right? <laughs> Ooh, look, modern art. Nice. Is that, Chris, is that Christopher Eccleston in the back seat? <laughs> I, was wa- I was watching that before. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> I, find, I, find, I, think that I think that advert's hilarious, personally. What a tragic, oh, yeah. what a tragic yeah, waste. Absolutely. What a tragic waste. Of a decent mower. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Why are you strobing this poor chick? I was going to say, none of this is for any LSD experimentation. They just wanted to do it to annoy her. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Don't look at the light! Don't look at the light! Oh, no dials! Now don't look at the... <laughs> like, 90% of the dials do nothing. <laughs> this Whoa. print is on its last fucking arse, isn't it? That, 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 that chart is so strong, it's actually ruining the film it's being printed on. That is amazing. <laughs> yeah, she's got decent eyelashes. If you actually lick the original film print that this was on, you will get a contact high. What is the point of this light thing? Is she being hypnotised? What's going on? What does that do? Um, it's capturing her soul. <laughs> well, see, these are the um, M- what is it? MK Ultra experiments, but they're saying these aren't MK Ultra experiments, even though that's what they are. Well, they they did use they did use LSD in the MK Ultra experiments. 
Yeah, I remember reading about that. They did an interview with a woman on one of Adam Curtis's docs about it. You know what's funny is that the CIA, these CIA agents were given like all this like mountains worth of LSD as a supply to like test it on these hippies, and they took half of it themselves. Mm. Well, you know, you gotta know the effects on yourself yeah. before you can see they the just, effects on others. They just, they just get this massive shipment of drugs and then be like, "Shall we just have a laugh this weekend?" Rah, come on, lads, let's get stuck in. <laughs> <laughs> One for you, two for me. One for you, two for me. Millions of dollars on a secret, taxpayer-funded mind control experiment, and they're just fucking about. <laughs> kind of like that. <laughs> They'd like spike each other with it. Yeah. How come my work can't do that? Can't do what? Because your work isn't the government. <laughs> you have Betty Jane's. Do you need anything else? Well, I'm already on well on the way of the trip. I've just finished my gremlin bar, so give it half an hour for it to kick in, and um, I'll be seeing colours, mate. Woohoo! Well, considering that this movie is basically black and white, that's not saying much. I hope we all see some colours. <laughs> I'd, I'd quite like to have been on MKL trip. Sounds like a laugh. Yeah, yeah, you know. You'd always be a bit wary about what your code word was, but... <laughs> code word is underpants. Yeah. S- sounds mint. Where do I sign up? You're just sort of cleaning dishes someday and somebody says, The Cubs win the Super Bowl. Must kill Reagan. Must kill Reagan. <laughs> now, I think you're thinking of uh, Manchurian Candidate. Yes. Yummy, 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 I got love in my tummy, I feel I got love in you. But listen to it, it's the same intro. <laughs> love is such a sweet thing, such a hell of me thing. Sorry, go on. No, I was going to say we were a guy in a coat. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry, seriously, go on. We were lacking a guy in a white coat. spices. <laughs> <laughs> This song was called Round Round and was used with gracious permission by Jonathan King. Whoa! God damn you, Jonathan King! Jonathan King, Jonathan bastard! Jonathan the pedo king. Yes. Probably. Wow! Oh, 67! So by this... the San Mateo Union High School. Man, they were good back then! <laughs> I want to go to San Mateo. Jonathan, former poster on Cooked and Bomb King. Um, yes, oh, sure. Hey. That, that's, that's the one. <laughs> yeah. Dude, how did they know how my head operates? Like, I literally have little stars going all the time. Uh. Learns gremlin bars are delicious. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You're addicted, aren't you? What are we looking at? Um, I think it's my will to live. Your will to live look, look, looks like an upside down exclamation point? Pretty much. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go any deeper than that. I'll let you guys at home uh, analyze that factor. But. Is that meant to be like the workings of the human brain? Is that what this is all about? Yeah, yeah. Maybe? Doctor. Ah, the doctor section of my brain. Scientist. The truck driver section of my brain. <laughs> is that the part of my brain that likes red sovine? Bum side of my brain. Bum side of your brain just appreciates, you know, beautiful asses, really. <laughs> I love the fact that the brain has a dedicated bum section. Well, that's how you get an ass man. Emotions? This kid, total ass man. So you have emotions, memories, feeling, empathy, and bum! (laughs) (laughs) Oh no, I just got broke up with. Send it to the arse section. (laughs) (laughs) I don't see any asses, teacher! I still don't see any asses! You must be more introspective, and the arse will come to you. <laughs> yeah, she goes to, you see on her wall, just a whole bunch of shots of asses. <laughs> Occasionally broken up with the occasional yeah. truck driver photo from the truck driver section of her brain as well. Yeah, can, someone, exactly. can someone put this film in the wash or something? It looks filthy. <laughs> <laughs> ben, I'll have you know this was a 4K transfer. What beautiful Lovingly hand- mandled, man- handled by Agfa. What beautiful handwriting for an eleven-year-old! <laughs> Why are there fish on the wall? The two fish portraits hung above the fireplace really tie the room together. Oh, hundred percent. So does that lovely couch. Hmm. 
It's been a rough day. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just guzzle bees. I'm gonna release my inner arse. <laughs> That's so black. What is it? <laughs> it's just pure um, tar. I, I, it's, it's melted Guinness. <laughs> it's it's pure tar and asbestos, the it's, greatest cocktail known to it's, man. It's uh, it's Guinness that's yeah. been left out in the sun, or as I call it, Mountain Dew. <laughs> it's definitely not Murphy's though. And adding a feel to the situation, the unsupervised adolescent playing the make. She's like twenty-seven years old. How is she unsupervised? <laughs> she's thirty-six. She's in the. I'm gonna government. call Domino's, and order all the pizza I want. That's right. Are we not watching Reef? Oh, it's good to see Elvis in an early role. So this is what led to Footloose. These are barbiturates. <laughs> there's a barbiturate. There's a bar bastard. We got a couple more bar bitches over there. Hey guys, come and check out my salmon paintings. <laughs> Taste the rainbow. <laughs> His haircut's giving me a bad trip. I don't blame you there. Oh my gosh, you can see her shoulders. Oh God good damn. lord. Kill her. Somebody get the haze code in here right now. Burn you the know, bitch. You, you can always blame gingers for everything, and they're all gingers. Fuck gingers, all gingers. All gingers deserve to die. Isn't that right, Dan? <laughs> You're all mean. Yes. All gingers deserve to die, <laughs> along with their staff. <laughs> Along with their butler. All right, Doctor Bengler. <laughs> <laughs> along with, along with their cars. Oh no! Somebody's Guys, disrupting the R section. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say this is starting to make me motion sick, guys. <laughs> Too much bum. You know what? This also happens during sex, during sleep. Or not enough. Bum. You know, panic attacks. While you're eating a really delicious candy bar. Being told good news, being told bad news. Being told um, news. Breathing. <laughs> yeah. The addict takes a chance. But cigarette oh my god, I had half But cigarettes <laughs> I had are half fine. a Marlboro and I'm off my tits. Yeah, but cigarettes are fine. Whoa. They're fine, they're fine. Yeah. Cigarettes are fine. This is yeah. before cigarettes gave you cancer. <laughs> See, are they talking about like the pills or are they talking about the water used to to put down the pills? Because you could say that the water is the thing that makes it bad. Mmm, that is a good point. My god, that is a good point. look at this mess. Oh no, the lampshade is at a slight angle. The room is in turmoil. <laughs> the couch is slightly askew from where it was previously. The couch is just happy to have two butts on it. That was the most unsubtle spiking I've ever seen. <laughs> Can't really call it even subtle, really. And I've spiked Dan's drink several times. Mm. <laughs> Why did that feel like a, uh, a precursor to Reefer Madness? <laughs> it does have reefer madness vibes. Yeah, it does. Because you might I, as well have just said, "I'm going to put something in your drink now." I feel like a lot of the ones that we've watched so far in this little collection, they're all like very scientific, aren't they? They're very formal. Apart from that weird one last time, where it was like the, do you remember it was like the Terry Gilliam, Alice in Wonderland type animation. Do you remember that one? Oh yes. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. I like that one. That one was good. I don't like this one. Hmm. Oh my god, the smoking weed mm. makes you have weird earrings. The Shit. devil's weed. <laughs> These are all the Doritos I've ever eaten. <laughs> Look out for triangles. You don't want triangles inside you. Uh, speak for yourself. Mm. Dan, did you forget to clean your brain again? My god, man. Have some pride. She's been brainwashed by those devil drugs. Turning him into a ah. deviant, a deviant art. The art of so, deviancy. So uh, he ingested soap. Is that what causes brainwashing? He ingested bath salts, and he just starts ripping people's faces uh, oh, off. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Everyone, quick! Protect the butt section. <laughs> it's, called, it's called the bum section, Dan. Jesus Christ! I thought you were a scientist, Dan. <laughs> I, Do your staff not teach you anything? I only claim to be, I only claim to be a scientist for medicinal purposes. <laughs> oh my God, we're so high! Oh no! Nice car. And your sexual urges will become very weird very quick. You will be attracted to this jackass. <laughs> Sounds great. You'll be attracted to his car. 
Coca-Cola. Yeah. What's the worst that could happen? Oh no, that's Dr. Pepper. Um, we want Coca-Cola. Oh, yeah. It's Catch the Wave. Catch the... Coca-Cola. Best things come to those who wait. That's Coca-Cola, right? Where's... Uh, yeah, it was... Uh, where's the beef, Coca-Cola? <laughs> Coca-Cola. Test drive one today. <laughs> It was a uh, clap on, clap off, clap on, clap off, Coca Cola. <laughs> Glad you guys remember that because uh, not familiar. This is back when Coca Cola would actually had real sugar in it, so it could probably kill you more likely than fucking a bit of grass would. <laughs> if I, if I had to Very guess. true. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, look at her pants. Wow. It goes, it goes up to her boobs. <laughs> I was just wondering, they look like peppermint stripes. I'm, uh,. I'm going to have to go buy a box of those at some point. She's one of those easy girls. One of those girls that dances. <laughs> or is he one of those I, easy guys? I hear she smoked half a cigarette once. One of those girls, <gasps> one of those girls yes! that Dan knows. Dan, get, <laughs> Dan, gets his, Dan, Dan gets his staff to go out and find these kind of girls. <laughs> I just say, bring them to me, and they know immediately what I'm on about. <laughs> they bring him to him in his mansion. <laughs> it's only partially on fire. <laughs> Ooh, the rear entrance. I mean, grrrr. <laughs> and they were able to track down the guy, like the pusher, by looking at the ass marks on the seat. They identified it by that. Try to look. I the idea that the police have dedicated buttologists. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> if we look at their bum, we can clearly see that it is this man. <laughs> Oh no! They found my very, very pink Cadillac. Whoa. <laughs> her powers of drugs allowed her to escape the cops? Holy shit. Wow. You heard it here first, viewers. If you want to evade police capture during the upcoming riots, just uh, do a load of drugs. So I <gasps> Well, that just pulls up my pants. I want a can of chew, bros. <laughs> uh, this, he found him with some pox, what they call those Japanese snacks that look like fags. Six. Oh, Pox. Uh, Pocky. Pocky. Oh, yeah, those are good. Yeah. Mm. Oh, no. <laughs> They're chilling at the rear oh, entrance. So Pocky's bad for you now? <laughs> Come on, you buzzkills. Great. Just walked into a deleted scene from Goodfellas. From I'm just here it. getting high with the <laughs> cast of Happy Days. That's Al there. <laughs> Oh, dude, you know, given how warm it's been, you definitely would not want to stuff drugs down your bra because no one will accept it. It's like boob money. You just, you don't want it. I mean, I probably still would. I will accept it. <laughs> no, believe me, you really don't want boob money. That shit stinks and it's wet and it's nasty. Truth speaking, from experience there, evidently. It's, it's like, I've had to take boob money before when I was a cashier and yeah, that, uh, no, no. <laughs> Is that just, what they do in that America? You kind of... You're all just giving each other money out of your bosoms. Yes, the, there are people that do that because they don't want to carry purses. And then they see them like reach down their shirt and like they're up to their elbow and they still haven't reached the money yet. And it's like, oh, dude, that's probably like covered in fungus. I really don't want that. That's disgusting. Oh. I think we should take their voting rights away just for doing that. Yep, yeah, I agree. Okay, you can piss off, you great bloody prude. <laughs> Scotus get on five hat. four by the end of the week. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. You can sit on. I didn't. You write can that. sit on that dildo and Dan's, spin. Dan staff wrote that. They told me to say it. <laughs> yeah, bullshit. Dan's matron wrote, came up and uh, she said, "Say this, Lord Bostock. Say this." <laughs> this will First, get them they came for the boob sweat money, this'll and I said ridiculous. nothing because I am not a boob sweat money. <laughs> They came for the sock money, but I didn't speak up because I am not sock money. They're called tits, Dan, and everyone has them. Are you G-string money, though? Therein lies the question. Uh, it depends on whether the note goes flat across the string or whether it's curled up and kind of wedged in. Hmm. Is it a front or back kind of a thing, or...? Pretty much, you know. Like, I imagine that if it was on the back, it would just be a bit like a money clip. Like a G-sharp string. Okay. Or a G-minor string. Hmm. I mean, the biggest thing is not asking for change because you don't want to know where she keeps the change. 
Well, what's you know, the, it's quite bizarre, the, the other forbidden place that is on ladies? That's right, the knees. <laughs> Not Oh, back of the knee money must be gross. <laughs> you don't realise how clammy it is. Yeah. She's, she seems fine. Yeah, she's okay. Yeah, whatever. As long as she doesn't lick that, she's okay. <laughs> I love the fact that, like, drugged out 60s people were basically akin to perfectly okay 90s kids. Yeah, basically. How many 90s kids did you see dressed like that? <laughs> um. <laughs> ben, we lived in the West Midlands. Maybe Most it's... people dressed like it was the 1960s. What do you mean, we? <laughs> you you lived in the West Midlands. <laughs> You lived in Manchester, crazy crooky cookie fun times. Yeah. Oh damn! Right. Are you gonna? You don't like saying where you're from? Are you gonna beat that now? What you just said? Uh, no, I'm okay with saying that I'm from the West Midlands because <laughs> um, Triv's from the Midwest and I'm from the West Midlands, so we kind of just like it's like two sides of the same uh -oh. coin. Basically, yeah. They're getting into the harder <laughs> stuff now. A gateway. See, that's what the devil weed. It's a gateway drug. It's a gateway oh, shit, to harder to stuff like gremlin bars. They're up to Tic Tac. Dr Pepper. Oh no. Fruit Tango, you name it. Oh no! Ah. Cream eggs, cream Kinder eggs. <laughs> oh, chaka doodle. Yes. No, he is gobbly. <laughs> Dude, He's you're on wasting some days. on your finger. He's on a sixty-a-day squashy habit, and we just can't get rid of them. Ah, damn it! <sighs> you're calling me out on my squashy habit. I, I'm kind of upset. <laughs> Hey, you, you hooked me up with gremlins. You were the one who got me hooked on the devil's chocolate. Well, that just bags You're my right. eyes. Whoa. <laughs> Why is it everyone is so freaking sweaty? Because they're all on drugs, uh, even man. Even the non-drug... Because they're all on drugs, Not man. Even the, sweaty drugs. Even the non-drug people, though, look, like, terrible. Like, I don't want to be any of them. Yeah. They all look very ill. Yeah. These are my mates. What are you on about? Don't be insulting them. <laughs> Are they your stuff? Yeah, it's like all my. This is like all my friends from 1999 to 2010. Hey, nothing wrong with that. Now, now here's my question. This is more of a tutorial than anything. Like they're like, okay, so you put the cotton down, and then you do this, and then okay, you want to make sure that you've got the arm figured really well, and then. Okay, so you want to shoot it directly yeah. into your eyes. This is like awesome. This is like Requiem for a Dream for the sixties. This. Yeah, it kind of yeah. is. <laughs> Just making notes. When you're choosing an injection, when you're choosing an injection rag, I personally like to go for one with it's a bit oily. I've I've admittedly <laughs> exactly. I've admittedly not hung out with many junkies, but I don't know if they like smile that gleamingly when they do when they're shooting up. <laughs> Oh, it was yeah. the 60s. Everybody, everybody smiled that gleamingly. <laughs> Fucking heroin. Let's go, man. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> they had to compensate for the giant sticks up their asses, so they had to smile all the time. Yeah. This is so great. I am you know, loving this heroin life. This is fun. This, <laughs> I want to this... see an eighty-year-old doing this shit, like you know, backwards cap and yeah. like like totally gangstered out. You like that's it's it's almost like train spotting in a sense. That's what I like about the fact that in most films you see junkies as like these depraved, depressed figures, and it's like with these two, it's like you know what heroin? It's fantastic. It's just brilliant. <laughs> I mean, as her, I wonder if her is generic, genetically uh, pre pre that predisposed to like be back in a ponytail, or what the deal is. <laughs> My favorite part is when I cease to feel. <laughs> yes, which automatically rules her out of being a hippie, yeah. which means she can't really be a druggie. They're still smiling away. Right, she's a beatnik. <laughs> They're still <laughs> makeup this on is great. point. Take the best orgasm you've ever had. Multiply it by a thousand, so. you're still nowhere near it. <laughs> <laughs> I, right, you've got me set now. I really want to see a 60s ad adaptation of Train Spotting, but using the 60s sensibilities of censorship. That'd be good. So it's just like, it's all great all the way through. Hey, if it's good enough for John Lennon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. That's what I like about the um, the get back thing on Disney Plus, the the Peter Jackson restoration. You can really see like the heroin ravaged eyes of John Lennon in full four K detail. It's fantastic. Oh, nice! <laughs> <laughs> I love looking into the eyes of people who have problems. 
<laughs> I love looking to John John Lennon and Yoko Ono, the the skeletally thin, unhealthy figures. <laughs> well, I'm uh, the other thing that I'm doing is a um, uh, we're kind of going over this Alice in Wonderland thing from the from the mid '80s, and it's mm. got Ringo Starr as the mock turtle. Oh yeah, and it is the weirdest damn thing you ever saw I've in seen, your whole life. I've seen that; it's fantastic. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. It's, it's just it's so weird though, because all of a sudden like. You see all the tears coming down his face, but, like, his voice doesn't reflect that. And he's wearing, like, weird fuzzy shoes, and I don't know. <laughs> well, he was a full-on alky. That's a real alky. image. That's probably when Ringo... That is true. But it was the 80s when Ringo Starr was a full-on alky, so that probably helped with that. <laughs> ah, but he was also starring in the great film Caveman, starring Barbara Back. That's where they met. Oh, shit. That's, that's, that's where mm. they met on that film. Oh. Mm. The rest they say was history. Yeah. Well, they're still together. They're, they're still together, which is nice. Mm. Quite, quite rare that for although, uh, uh, Hollywood couples. Yeah. Although True. she's uh, stopped answering Ringo's fan mail for him, so. <laughs> I am warning you of peace and love. I love you all, but fuck off with your fan mail, you cunts. Peace and love. Peace and love. <laughs> peace and love. <laughs> <laughs> Peace now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going. To, I'm going to eat a very large Vianetta. Peace and love. <laughs> Fuck off. He's going to eat a Pizza Hut because I bet he gets Pizza Hut for life now since he did those adverts in the nineties. Ooh, there you oh, go. Oh yes, their breadsticks are pretty decent. The pizza is. Eh. I, I that's, don't like Pizza Hut pizza. That's a that's um, a that's a funny advert. He's like, I just want to get back with the lads, and then the monkeys come in. Ah. Ah. It's, it's a funny advert. Just him and chilling. Don't, chilling with Mickey Dolenz. Don, Donald Trump also did Pizza Hut adverts. The, the, the message oh, is... Shit. I think everybody did. Do, do a Pizza Hut advert, skip a bit, become president. Uh, Ringo for president. Ringo 2024. Yeah. yeah, I'd be okay with that. Let's hit the hook. Can't be any weirder than what's there. God, her dress is fabulous. You know, she may be drugged out of her freaking mind, but she knows how to dress. This is like that bit in Blue Velvet. That is... <laughs> It is, yeah. Where Isabella Rossellini comes in Bitch. naked on the lawn. <laughs> was there like a... Sk- Dude, she's got a collar. That's so weird. Was that Cosme or did, did the actual video just skip then? Uh, the video that was skipped, the film. I think. Yeah, they missed out yeah, like... The film. They missed out like two words. It was like, so the girl... And then here she is. It was, that was very strange. <laughs> Ben, that's the powerful effect of drugs on your system. <laughs> oh, it was deliberate. It was an artistic decision. Yeah. yeah. Uh, People at the end probably of this, the only one in this whole thing. <laughs> at the end of this film, a scientist would come out to the audience and say, now, who heard the two missed words? We spiked you. These people are the, yeah. most, these people are the most boring junkies I've ever met. Yeah. Yeah. You know, nobody's trying to jump out the window to fly. Nobody's stealing cars because the government is stealing their pens. Hey, if he was <laughs> if he was really on heroin, those eyes would be shut very tight. He'd be fast asleep. He, <laughs> he wouldn't would, be yeah. he wouldn't be looking around like that. Jesus Christ. How many times in these years have I wondered? Whoa. Yeah. That that was what the weird. Hell? Yeah. And then the night I got high. It's good, isn't it, when you can't tell if it's an artistic thing or if it's just because the film has been so badly looked after. <laughs> In all these years. <laughs> so is is the sparkly dress before or after the shot on the bridge? Um, so the idea was the shot on the bridge was supposed to be her in her beautiful life before heroin. But unfortunately, the filmmakers haven't done a very good job of making her heroin version look like bedraggled enough. So it just actually True. looks like she's just had a night out and drunk a bit too much. Exactly. I mean, her hair's a little bit disheveled. If anything, the heroine's improved her appearance. <laughs> I mean, I would. Yeah, but you, you you don't need that. You've got your staff. You just shut them. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I don't know why I have them bring me women, to be completely honest. <laughs> bring me women. Now. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you say. <laughs> this uh, this print is, is pony. It's a bit shocking. It is. Yeah. Oh no, it's an unmarked cop car. <laughs> Quick, I better, I better hide the three pounds of beef I bought the other week. Need a Eureka, <laughs> need a Eureka Films, Criterion, Arrow, fucking... I'm just naming DVD labels now. Seven films, <laughs> That's eight, okay. eight, 88 films, 
uh, second sight. Okay, Ben, are are you are you BFI. on heroin? I think I think you're you're just on heroin right now, is aren't you? That's that's why you've gone this route. Network. He's having a uh, he's having a contact high because of the gremlin bar I ate. Disney Plus. No, that's fair. Mir- <laughs> Miramax. <laughs> Skin Are you mats. wearing a sparkly dress with slightly disheveled hair right now? Oh, uh, for the fifth, t- for the fifth time, yes, I'm wearing a sparkly dress with disheveled hair. It's... You've you're, you've had heroin, you, haven't you? You keep asking me this. The cops are headed. The cops are headed to your place right now. You know that. We don't Be have... sure to pick up a t-shirt from their official website. You have the right to remain fabulous. We don't have cops anymore. <laughs> we have community support officers. Ah. Yes, who who have the power to restrain you but not arrest you. So you can basically just tell them to wank off and then run off. Ah, okay. Or just punch them really in the... Then, then they go behind a tree and actually wank off. Uh, just punch them in the cliff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they ain't oh. gonna do nothing. I ain't afraid of no community support officer. Yeah, I mean, what are they gonna do, right? You were fine? Fuck that, it's not enforceable. Ah, uh, she's just got... So you know the, the, she's just the, the, got old, the old... Uh, She's just got eczema. The old, the old uh, epi- <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I'm joking. Go on. Um. So the old song uh, "Fuck the Police" doesn't really work so well when it's "Fuck the Community Support Officer." <laughs> <laughs> it, it doesn't. Um, they have to kind of change the rhythm a little bit, but they can make it work. Well, when um, when the film "Straight Out of Compton" came out over here, they had to redub it. So during the fuck the police scene, it was fuck the community support officer. <laughs> Coming straight from the underground. They didn't even bother like changing the voice. It was just some bloke. Yeah, it was one of the BBFC people. Just literally pulled the microphone out. <laughs> just any Damn. microphone. To someone that absolutely wanted to be able to be, uh, you know, in showbiz, but they didn't know how. Thank you for stressing mm. down that it was any microphone. You know, I just I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have guessed otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> should I blow? Should I blow my fan down the microphone and see what noise it makes? Let's find out. Yes, let's do it. Yeah, they're really helping her out right now. I'll tell you. I mean, listen to that. I can't hear a thing because of the noise cancellation. <laughs> that was good, wasn't it? That was fun. Should we do something else? And yeah. she's dying. <laughs> nice job, officers. Okay, so three words. It's a book. Um, misery. Uh, only fools and horses. Um, first word is itch. Hamlet. Seven year, seven year hitch in the line of duty. <laughs> Jaws. King Lear. Jaws two. Jaws three. Uh, Jaws for the revenge. Jaws for the revenge. <laughs> Tom Sawyer. Friday the Thirteenth. Cruel Jaws. Friday the Thirteenth. Part two. Girls in Brooklyn. <laughs> White chicks. Ah. <laughs> That was a book? Yeah. Oh no, she put down did her not, hair. Did you not, oh fuck. Do you not remember the start of the film White Chicks? It says, uh, based on the novel by Elmore Leonard. <laughs> and she did grab his trousers and say, it proclaimed, suck it in, sister, before heaving as hard as she could. <laughs> is this still going? Give me the shit. The this, is, this is really outstated as well, can I be honest? Yeah, it just keeps so, going and going and going. Fucking hell, this is worse than so things. Her, so her, um, <laughs> so her, her style got more fabulous as she started to do stuff. She got into cr- the deep dark world of drug crime. Ooh. Back ends, front ends. Other ends. Wow, she's got great aim. Maybe she should become like a gangster of sorts. Mm. You know, some people just. This, have this a is what you happen when you wear your hair down. <laughs> I'm not sure what's happening now. I've 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 stopped paying attention. <laughs> yeah, no, she didn't let her. Kind of... <laughs> she she colored in her eyebrows differently. That's really the biggest thing. Ah, okay, okay. Um, uh, twelfth night. No, okay. <laughs> White chicks too. Oh, this is now. I should also point out this is now a new film. The previous oh, film didn't know. have didn't have end credits, so when it went to black very briefly, this is now a new film. Oh, it's a good thing you said that. I was going to say. Otherwise, I'd just assume that we were just carrying on with the other one. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, he's trying to drown his kid. Good. Stay down there. Hold your breath for two minutes. 
She pulls out the bottle and bashes her husband over the head. Why would these have been shown in school? Tequila. So what's this one about? Drugs. Uh, I believe this Not one is about booze. <laughs> Boozing and schmoozing. I, I, think, Volume three. I think it might be about drugs, you know. I could be wrong. Oh, you know, cucumber sandwiches are a gateway drug. <laughs> I might I might be wrong in that assessment, but... <laughs> it starts with cucumber sandwiches. Before you know it, you're eating grilled cheese in Philly, wondering where it all went wrong. Yeah, so that was my path. Where would these have been shown in, like, schools and stuff? Um, so they played them in sort of multiple places. Schools would probably play them. They would have, um, like, when they did, like, city hall meetings or town meetings, they would have sort of things like that. Um, what would generally happen is, say, a week before the film was going to play somewhere, they would put, like, a big advertising campaign out to say they'd book out, like, a community hall and say, we're screening this film. It's shocking. It's terrifying. You'll learn the true secrets of drugs. Mm. And they'd have, like, cars <laughs> driving around with megaphones on the roof sort of proclaiming the film was coming soon. And no, they wouldn't. People would go and... <laughs> cars with megaphones. Yeah, what are you on about? <laughs> Genuinely. Well, that's, I mean, look at Blues Brothers. That didn't happen. Yeah. Your, kind your of staff that. told you that. They were lying. <laughs> <laughs> the best thing, and this is the bit that's always missing from these movies, is when they would do these sort of war... They, they call them, I think it was wall-to-wall -wall bookings or something like that, where they, or four-wall bookings, mm. where they'd sort of rent just like a community hall and they'd put the film on in there. And the idea would be is that when the film was playing, they wouldn't make their money from the tickets to get in. That would basically just pay off the hall. Um, they would actually have like literature. You could buy books off them about drug awareness or like yeah. uh, premarital sex or things like that. <laughs> and that would be where they'd make the money. Nice. Well, that's like a movie theater making money off concessions as compared to the actual movie. Yeah, basically. Basically. Whoa. Hey, look, we're rocking out. Yeah. My aura, man. Oh, so is this one about booze? I want some of those cucumber sandwiches. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I thought booze was... If your body is more than 10% cucumber sandwich, then you're out of... 0.10% cucumber sandwich. Oh, but, I, but I thought booze was all right back then. This was before booze gave you lung ca it, liver cancer. It was, until it wasn't. Why can't we get the old booze and fags back? The ones that didn't kill you. I'm... <laughs> It was because it's all a government ploy, Ben. We need to replace our aging population as quickly as possible. Why can't we get the, the well, pre-cancer cigs back? Mm. Yes. <laughs> well, and think about it this way, too. Like, you look at anything. So, say, even, like, rock music or, you know, even um, ice cream back in the day. There was always those people that said that those things were bad. Like, they actually outlawed ice cream in Chicago because they thought that people gathering together were, were creating gangs. So they, that's why the Sunday came about for Sundays, oh. because actual, like, normal ice cream in a cone Is that was why outlawed. it's called Ice Cube? As a sort of rebel, yeah. as a rebellious thing? Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, we all remember the Battle of Ben and Jerry's. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Ben and Jerry. Yeah, Jerry, that prick. Oh, his, yeah, he was the Mike love of the Ben and Jerry's experience. <laughs> with his ice cream Sunday parties. You don't even parties. get me started on Blue Bunny. <laughs> Ironically, I'm we drinking... We had Tom Carvel coming into this. I'm drinking Jim Beam at the moment because it's Saturday. <laughs> Ooh, very fancy. I, I mean, Jim Beam is a Saturday beverage, there's no doubt. It's also so a Sunday ben, beverage and a Monday to... one. Tuesday and Wednesday, yes. So... Going through Thursday and occasionally Friday. But, well, always. Well, I say occasionally, what I mean is always. But, you know. So, Ben, when did you decide to do, you were going to commit your life to sin? When did you decide to drive around in a car, you big posher? Because <laughs> that car is like the size of the Titanic. Well, he told me. Titanic. Arstanic. Did you record that before? We'll say, it, we'll say it again in case you cut it out. Arstanic. <laughs> Look at his shoes there. Oh, no. Time. Not the child. Uh -oh. She's not Please a child. Think of this. She's 37. Oh, shit. Good. <laughs> please, please look at my medical bracelet. <laughs> he actually, like, put the gas to the metal after he saw that he hit her. It's like, <laughs> never liked that kid. He sped up, and then he put it in reverse. <laughs> and then he came back for more. <laughs> yeah. And then he and came she back. just lay there. He got arrested, went to jail, came back, and over again. 
<laughs> he fucking hated Did you hear that story? Did you hear that story you know, he that came out touch- this week about, about the Indian woman who got attacked by an elephant? Oh, yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> yeah. Have you heard about this, Ben? No. I'm just... No? I shouldn't laugh. I, I, you're going to say something like, oh, yeah, the elephant killed her or something to, to buzz kill yeah, it, but... It- <laughs> go oh, well. <laughs> right, so basically what happened was this this Indian woman um, decided to go off a, off the beaten path on a track that she was going on and she got attacked by an elephant. And this elephant really disliked her and like properly beat the shit out of her until she was the dead. Elephant, she was like 87 the, years the old. The elephant disliked her now. Was the elephant asked this? How do you know? <laughs> Stay with me. No. Because. <laughs> because I'd rather not, personally. <laughs> The woman died, which is very sad, right? And they had a funeral that was near the path where she went off the path and got attacked by the elephant. And the same elephant rocked up with a load oh of other God. elephants and trashed the funeral oh and pulled God. her out of the casket it's like, and beat her up again. Oh, my God. It's like, <laughs> this is like the Indian version of Jaws for the revenge. The elephants want revenge. <laughs> they want the brodies. Or whatever the fuck. <laughs> What, what's the Indian word for Brody? What, wasn't, it, <laughs> wasn't it because, like, um, back in the day, like, she led a bunch of poachers or distracted the elephant while poachers took the elephant's baby or something? I can't, can't remember. I, that it, that would give them grounds at least for their revenge. Because they were talking the s- about how elephants don't forget. Mm. They do. That's bollocks. No, absolutely. <laughs> they do. That's all Apparently they shit. don't. They're elephants. They're dumb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude! What? You know what's gonna happen <laughs> now? Elephants are gonna track your ass down after what? listening to this, can elephants... and they are gonna kick your ass, man. Can elephants work central heating? No, fuck them. <laughs> can elephants fly a plane? No, fuck them. Can elephants just... direct adverts? No, fuck them. <laughs> I've just got the image of Ben in his twelfth-story apartment, just recording this, going "fuck elephants," and then the front window, twelve stories up, smashes through, and a herd of elephants just come in and smash the whole thing up. I'm glad every time an elephant dies. I'm wearing elephant skin right wow. now with my elephant boots on. Fucking pricks. We well, you know what's going to happen. An, ele- an elephant is going to have like a little helicopter attachment, and they're going to like, like come up, to, like hover up to the for- to the twelfth floor, and then just like kamikaze your apartment. Good. <laughs> Would it be uh, nine and elephant? My least, Probably, yeah. My least favorite album is Elephunk by the Black Eyed Peas because it has the word elephant. Oh, in for it. that joke, I'm thinking that you're going to get double killed. His least favourite film is a tie between Dumbo and Fantasia. Oh, man. Better than Operation Dumbo Drop. Mm. Ah! Excuse me a minute, I will be back momentarily. He had to swerve to hit it. Yes, he did. Oh, no! (laughs) Mild inconveniences, my biggest weakness. Yes. Mild Inconveniences, the movie. I feel like this is the precursor to Birdemic. Yes, it's all very kind of location footage of people driving. It's, that's yes. basically the majority of this film. You know what this film is actually really about? It's about a different kind of glassware. <laughs> like, there's been some really beautiful glassware in this. And this young alcoholic would grow up to become Johnny Cash, his assistant. <laughs> But in our language, if chance means risk, it also means opportunity. And every driver who still has not taken one chance too many still has an opportunity to begin. White, 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 white. <laughs> If this film made my bollocks fall off, how boring was that? <laughs> well, considering we talked about, uh, like, um, uh, what did we talk about during uh, we this? Spoke about, we, we spoke about Elef- Elephant 911, that was the one. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Dude, she's got a fantastic hat. 
That's great. She has. Uh, now, if you thought the last one was boring, this one isn't much better. I remember this one very keenly. It's basically 25 minutes of a hardcore drug user who's now fully in recovery, giving a very dramatic speech about how drugs ruined her life and how she managed to recover from it. Um, it's basically this shot for about 20 oh. minutes. Dude, please tell me at least one of those microphones doubles as a dildo and at one point she takes it out and uses it. Uh, no, but one of them does double up as a big fat doobie and she just sort of pulls it out and lights it and then, you know, uh, reggae comes on and everything's all right. No, I was going to say, so it's a hookah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Hey, I'm back. Very strong New York accent as well. Hey, hey Ben, we were just talking about how you have a very strong New York accent. What important plot points, <laughs> what, what plot points have I missed in the uh, thing? Um... So, you missed the very end of the last film, which was just really boring. It was just a bloke driving around for about 25 minutes going, Booze is terrible! It's over already? And, and now we're oh, on the, good. Yeah, that's over. Now yeah. we're on this new one. And this one is probably the most dullest... It's the most interesting one if you're just watching it, like, as part of the set. But it's also one of the most dullest ones to actually do any kind of commentary over. Because it is basically 25 minutes of this woman, who is a hardcore drug user who's now in recovery, talking about her experiences as a hardcore drug user in New York in the 70s. Well, that's ve- well, that's boring. Let's talk about elephants. Let's talk about more I just elephants. wanted to... I just wanted to say that every single person that we've noticed in the crowd looks bored as shit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and believe me, if you were listening to this in real life, you would be too. Because none of them oh, yeah. are allowed any drugs. They're just thinking how Damn fantastic it. it sounds to uh, do what she's going through. She was like, oh, I was crawling through an alley and, you know, needles stuck in my arm. And, he, and look at that guy. I'm pointing. He, you can't see, but I'm pointing. He's thinking, <laughs> oh, I'll have me some of that. <laughs> Hey, you know Everybody what? At least you know you could. I think you could probably lick the wallpaper though over there, and you could probably get a contact high from something. Mm. That wallpaper's a the drug crime. The raspberries taste like raspberries. The snozberries <laughs> taste oh, like snozberries. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go into the story about snozberries and ruin that whole experience for people? I absolutely do. In a later adult novel that Roald Dahl wrote, um, he clarified that a snozberry is um, dick, basically. Is that true? And that the taste of snozberry. Yes. Why did he do that? With he, big there's a, there's a pass- so the the adult novel he wrote is very surreal, but it's about a I forget whether it's father and son, father and daughter, or like partners. But basically, the idea is that they decide to strike on the idea that if the daughter or female partner goes out and fucks a load of like really famous men she can collect their sperm, which they can then sell on the black market to help create, like, geniuses and famous people kids. And the whole plot of the film is this woman basically going around shagging about. Um, But there's a passage where the bloke asks her how she got off a particular celebrity client, and she goes, oh, I just uh, gave him a couple of toots on his snozbury, which obviously means dick. (laughs) Yeah, but that... So, yeah. (laughs) Hang on, so that... She could have just been using that as slang. That doesn't mean that he's saying that snozberries are actually... That's the, the origin of them. He could have just been making an in-joke oh, no, for the Roald Dahl fans. Even so, it's still quite a an interesting thing to think, think that Wonka was making I, I reading, elderly I, people and children lick dick. I think you're reading a bit too much into that clearly throwaway joke. Yes, he's not. He's I not actually to take it saying, very literally. He's not. But that, actually, this is Dan we're talking about, so he overanalyzes quite a few things. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he's got a very clickbait mentality. Um, <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> I mean, have you seen his YouTube channel like titles? I mean, my God, oh. they're all clickbait. <laughs> Could you explain basically that you said, "Oh, Snozberries"? Like I thought that it was implied that it was going to be some multi-paragraph explanation, but no, you just it was just a throwaway line that's clearly a joke. <laughs> Yes, yes it is. But in the absence of any other definition for a snozbury. Well, I think I don't think he thought that when he wrote the, the the book in the first place. He probably just thought this is a funny funny confectionery word for a thing. <laughs> I'm not sitting there thinking he was re- writing Willy Wonka going <laughs> penis. Um, yeah. but I mean in the absence look at of look natural... at the uh, Johnny Depp version of uh, Willy Wonka in the chocolate factory. I mean from that you could get some of those impressions. Mm. Yeah, but Roald Dahl didn't like the original film as much as he didn't like Jews. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> not wrong, not wrong. Very right. I just wish they'd take out the Cheer Up Charlie bit from that film. Everything else is fine. But <laughs> it's all right. 
<laughs> when did Roald, when did Roald Dahl die? Uh, some sometime in the nineties, uh, early nineties. Um, good. I remember when uh, <laughs> he must have been alive in the eighties because I remember when they did the film of the witches, you know, with Angelica Houston. And, oh, called oh, yeah. the witches. Yeah, the, yeah, and he he hated that so much that he uh, he picketed it himself. As in, <laughs> literally him, him on his own went outside cinemas <laughs> telling people not to go in and see the film. He said, I hate Angelica Houston as much as I hate brown people. I think that's what he said. <laughs> I'm just seeing him like that picture of David Lynch with the cow when he was trying to get Laura Dern an Oscar. <laughs> just sort of sat in a high chair with like two yeah. cows sat outside the theatre going, do not watch The Witches. I don't think he liked any of his adaptations. He didn't like the original Willy Wonka. He didn't like The Witches. Really? Um, what other ones are there that I'm forgetting? Matilda. James I don't, and the Giant Peach. That was I don't think he was. I don't think he was alive for Matilda. When did Roald Dahl die? I'm going to check actually. Where's my internet? I was going to say Matilda came out in the 90s. I thought. Yeah, 96. Mm. Matilda. Uh, I just want to see when Roald Dahl died. Oh, so we would have died. seen James and the Giant Peach. I don't think he was alive for that. 2000. That was two. That was 2000. Because I went to see that. Um, oh, he died in 1990. The 20- oh, okay. right, you wouldn't have seen any of that. Yeah. Oh, I just wanted to point out that this lady on screen just mentioned the word street whore. Excellent. But I'm still boring as hell. <laughs> Everyone take a shot. <laughs> She's also wearing the same watch as the chick from the last movie. <laughs> and I'm all, sorry, the, it's all the druggy person from the... Yeah, The drug exactly. PSA cinematic so, universe, it's all connected. <laughs> So, so does the watch kind of pick up where the guy in the white lab coat was for the first half? Uh, yeah, so the white lab coat guy is trying to get all of the druggies together to form a supergroup. Um, I don't know, they were called the LSD-25 or something. Um, <laughs> it's all connected. <laughs> we shall call it the Grateful Dead. You know, I'm pretty sure, speaking of that, I don't think any of the looks of these people's faces have changed. I think they might actually be dead. <laughs> they did the uh, age-old film thing of just filming for the first five minutes some crowd reaction, and then they couldn't be asked to film any more for the rest of the recording, so they just got that just... opening five minutes that they have to keep using for the next 20 minutes. I was just about to say that. I feel like we're just watching the same shots over and over <laughs> in a loop. <laughs> oh, shut up. And then I got a foot fungus, and it was really annoying, so I had to take some heroin to be able to deal with it. <laughs> Of course, the important thing was that I had an onion on my belt, which was the style at the time. <laughs> and that's how you ward off vampires from your abode. <laughs> Any questions? And then I got that Gwyneth Paltrow uh, vagina candle, and man, that was really nice, but I think it was only because I was, you know, three liters deep in LSD at the time. <laughs> Could she not make this more interesting? Could she not, like, get a fried egg out or something and go, this is your brain... This is a fried egg. I don't know how it goes. This ben, is your brain. I, I this don't is an want egg. to see this woman some, get her fried egg out. Summit, summit drugs. Oh. Any questions? This is, yeah, th- this is your brain. This is your brain on drugs. <laughs> Any questions? That's it. Uh, yes, can my brain be used as part of a complete breakfast? I always like how um, Bill, H- Bill Hicks' observation that the guy sounds drunk when he's doing the commercial. Just like, this, this is your brain. This is, this is drugs. This is, this is this is your brain. <laughs> she wasn't smart with dope. I hate it when I'm not smart with dope. <laughs> it's too much. I said to, I said to my nail person, no, I don't want this. I I can't handle it. Why does she need, Why does she need two microphones? Her voice is loud enough. I don't know. <laughs> Why does she need two ears? One is loud, or one is big enough. You probably only need one ear. Why does she need two earrings? One is loud enough. (laughs) Exactly. You probably only need one ear. I mean, you know, you don't hear that much in your life, do you? Hey, it worked for Van Gogh. Why can't it work for her? You probably only need. I'm going to be honest. I mean, I think two eyes are probably important. You could do with one nostril. No, you probably one ear. No, you probably only need one eye. Um, you don't really need. Well, for depth, you need two eyes. You don't really need teeth, really, do you? Let's be honest. No, anything can be mashed. Just, you just drink stuff. Um, one arm, one arm is probably good, but you don't need the length of an arm. It could just be like a hand on a one foot kind of stump that'd do it. Yeah. You don't need all those fingers. That could be downsized. Okay, what about two boobs? 
Um, I think one boob is enough, but for aesthetic sense, two. I don't know. I think if we're going essentials, we could probably lose a boob. But we could just make the one boob big, like huge, like the size of your chest, just one big, like, you know, it's like the size of a manhole cover. Just one big boob. They better reinforce the back then, because you're going to need some structural support for that. <laughs> and remind me never to trust you with creation, because I don't trust you to create anything. <laughs> the fact that your logos are so well balanced, I, I got nothing on that, man. Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just blown away by that. Ben, how do you put up with this lack of like, like synchronization or whatever? It doesn't work. Lack of, lack of what now? Lack of, like, symmetry. It doesn't work. Um, that... Well, uh, I just... I just defer to the words of our creator, who said that, um... Let he who is not symmetrical cast the first stone. That's probably from the Bible, well, we right? Can... <laughs> well, if, I mean, gonna, that's, if someone's I mean, gonna pass a stone, I'm glad that Dan is gonna be the one to do it. I mean, that sounds that sounds about right, doesn't it? That probably, yeah, that's, I'm probably, oh, yeah. you know, I'm probably right. I'm probably right. Yeah, yes, yeah. I think yes, you are, yeah. yes, that's from the Bible. I don't think Let we need he the, I, who has I, I, two I, knobs cast the first tree. Said he, and then he. <laughs> <laughs> and then he went into the desert and had a fight at the end. <laughs> all I remember, I'm on the all edge I remember of my from seat. my, all I remember from my Protestant C of E upbringing is that Jesus knocked over some market stalls, and that's what got him crucified. Not all the other stuff. He just yes. knocked. A, he was in Berry Market. Once, once, they were selling some black puddings, and I said, "I, I cast thee out." You black puddings, because he's a horrible racist. And he, he just, mm. he said, I cast thee out, the I spee. That's what he said. And he knocked the table over. And the Romans weren't having that. The, the Romans no. were just not having that at all. So they, they, they said, said things like, what, what are you doing, mate? Stop it. Uh, did I tell you that my occupation is an RE teacher? That's why I did. Yes, <laughs> Listen, did. You're getting a sample of my lessons now. And then Jesus came on, right? <laughs> no, shut up. Listen, right? No. Sounds like a good porn right there. You lads at the back, you need to shut up, right? Because this is important. Because you'll go to hell. <laughs> he came on and he said, I have, I have two eggs and one of them is made of wine. And he turned the egg into wine. And that's, and that, and, <laughs> and that's the story of Moses. Kinder egg? A sip. And then the seas parted, and uh, it was all great. And then uh, he came back on Easter, and that's why we eat Easter eggs. The end. Were there dinosaurs involved? I hear yes. that there's dinosaurs involved. See, that's why yes. we have Easter Bunny, because Jesus was re reincarnated as a rabbit. Ah, okay. Why do you think it's called was Bugs Jesus Bunny? Jesus ginger? God, you got to read between the lines, you crazy kids. <laughs> I mean, I don't know whether you've read the Lost Book of the Lizard, but uh, there, there was an entire period of Jesus' life Dan, in his 20s where I wrote, he had a... I wrote the Lost Book of the Lizard. Oh, wow. Amazing. That's so incredible. What, 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 was your interpretation, your what was your interpretation of the bit where uh, Jesus resurrected a dinosaur called Denver who had a flying 80s style, even though the 80s hadn't happened yet? <laughs> well, it, what happened is Jesus came back as a lizard and he started spouting like 90s pop culture references. So he, the ni the Romans came out, they were like, oh my God, it's Jesus. And he went, it's tail time. And started like flipping him about. And then he went, lock and load, little lizard. And then he went into the horror right. level and he said, this place is bigger than Oliver Reed's bar tab. That's a line from the UK oh, version of Gex. Like, settle down. Just to explain, Triv, there was Can a UK explain, version of uh, Gex where he was voiced by um, an Englishman, uh, not Dana Gold, and his references were all oh. UK-centric. So he'd say things like, this is places bigger than the Spice Girls dressing room, or this place is like being on Supermarket Sweep. That's what he said. <laughs> he did. <laughs> All right, can you can you having written the uh, the lost book of the lizard? Can you explain Limburger cheese to me? Um. Okay. So Lim Limburger cheese is basically 
So Jesus, right, he was in the desert, and the, the devil said, Jesus, you, you're bad. I'm going to tempt you now. You can, you, if you jump off the cliff, I will, I will not catch you. And Jesus went, now hang on a minute, devil. That is not the way of, that is not the way of the road. So he challenged the devil to a duel, a fiddle duel. And he, he played the fiddle like a right mean man. And that's how we have Limburger cheese. All right, I appreciate that. And by the way, and there was this another lady one is as well. still talking. There was another one as well, <laughs> right, where he was on a rock and he okay. said summer on the rock. It was very, very good. It was very important. He just, okay. like, he was reciting um, the lyrics to songs by 90s post-punk band The Breeders. So he would come on <laughs> and he would say, um, I know you're a cannonball. That's what he'd say. And he'd say okay. the shade a lot. That's what he said. Is this woman still talking? Okay, good. Look, anything I'm saying is She's more interesting. Talking. Look, anything I'm saying is far more interesting than what's being said on the screen. So I might as well just say anything. Well, um, she's getting really passionate now, so so I, I don't know. Uh, the only words I've been able to pick up from this so far is, my, and her neck was fused to her spine. And I was like, well, I hope so. Because if it wasn't, she'd probably have like a big floaty head like Mystics in Bali. That's very true. Dude, she's got a speculum there on the table, and I don't know why. I'm kind of put off by that. It's to complement the two microphones. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. To to separate them because they... <laughs> the the thing is right, and I need to make this very clear. Whilst all of this has been going on, her story is actually incredibly harrowing. <laughs> like, it's I'm really glad. grim. Good. Yeah, but. Well, I feel now. I feel bad. <laughs> well, it's her own fault for being. Hey, old. lizard Jesus, can 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 you please forgive me for for laughing and making fun while she's telling this terrible story? And I didn't mean terrible as in I, it sucks it happened to her. What's your favorite film of 1999? Uh, uh Matrix. <laughs> no, Existence. <laughs> you both said erm um, at the exact same tone and measurement and everything. It's quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> the Matrix. That, that's it. That's not about or Existence. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go for Ex- Nutbag. Existence. I thought Nutbag came out in 2000. I'm going... Oh yeah, it was Nutbag. Ah, but it was shot in 1999. But it wasn't released in 1999. That doesn't count, though. Yeah. Ah. So, no. You're a nutbag for liking a movie in 2000 when he asked for 99. I don't think Dan has seen any films from ni- from anywhere, from ever. <laughs> Just from any, no, he scene, has. From Just... any, any year. <laughs> Are we saying that Dan is timeless? No. Oh. <laughs> that would be a no. That would be a compliment. I just read a book about 1999 and why it was the best year ever for cinema. So it's, yeah, that's why it's been on my mind. Well, yeah. 1981 was a really good year for uh, horror. What came out in 81? Oh, like everything and its mom. Like all yeah, kinds of awesome. Like? Yeah. Friday the 13th, part two. Uh, Halloween yeah. two, I think, was 81. Uh, what else did they have? They had a whole bunch of low-budget stuff that was awesome. Yeah, yeah. A good chunk of Bill Rebane's collection came out in the early 80s. Well, there you go. That's all you need to know. <laughs> yeah, because it was talking about how, like, in 99, you had, like, uh, Fight Club, The Blair Witch Project, Sixth Sense, uh, The Iron Giant. Ooh, yeah. All these great films. Um, yeah. I'm looking at my shelf now and I actually cannot see a single film from 1999 on that. The, the Iron Giant was one of the follies of Warner Brothers feature animation in the 90s. Someone should write a book about Warner Brothers feature animation, the brief company they had in the 90s. That was a, it's a really fascinating story and no one's really done it. Like They did like five films and only one of them made any money. And, and that film... did they do the uh, Batman animated film? No, that no, 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 no. So the Warner Brothers feature animation was like, because Batman animated was done by the TV division. That's that that was a separate thing. Warner Brothers feature animation was a separate company, and they made five films. They did Space Jam, Quest for Camelot, The Iron Giant, uh, Looney Tunes Back in Action, and Osmosis Jones. Out of those five, which one do you recommend any money? 
Wherever she goes, Flory is uh, an questions of young Well, uh, I'm sure that uh, Space Jam did, yeah. Correct. Triv is correct. She wins she wins the commentary. It was Space Jam. I was going to say cuz I cuz I reviewed uh, Back in Action and it was like it was I, I don't think it was critically panned, but like I, the studio didn't promote it. I like because Back in it basically turned Oh, it's amazing. It's such a fun... It's, I, it's more true to what the, yeah. the Looney Tunes are, but, like, the, the studio wanted, like, Space Jam 2 but I, because they couldn't get Jordan back in the way that they should have had him. They, and it came out, like, the week... I'm trying to think. It came out the week after Lord of the Rings, Return of the King, and yeah. the week before Elf or vice versa. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually really genuinely love that tossed. film. I think I think it's far better than Space Jam, and like you said, it's oh, it's definitely more true to the Looney Tunes um, aesthetic than Space Jam is, easily. Um, oh yeah. But like you say, I think the studio would, and Joe Dante directed it, and you know he's you know did Gremlins and all these cracking films, uh, Gremlins Two. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, it's new batch. Yeah, but um, it, for, for whatever reason, they did these, like like I say, five films. And only Space Jam was the one that had any success, so they folded very quickly. But then they had these all these yeah. great properties, like The Iron Giant, which is a really good film. But again, like with Back in Action, they just didn't seem to care about promoting it in any way, shape or form. So they're just kind of... Yeah. And it's and it's, it's weird, because like, it's Warner Brothers. They're like the, king, the kings of animation in terms of like the theatrical shorts, the Looney Tunes shorts. And they said, well, Disney have got this renaissance going on with, like, Aladdin and Lion King and all that stuff. So we'll do a renaissance of our own. And they failed. They fell on their fucking asses. And it's just... Uh, yeah. Well, the problem with Space Jam was it was such... You know, it was a Michael Jordan movie that, you know, just happened to have the Looney Tunes in the background. And <laughs> the same thing was true of the new one. It was just... Oh, I no. I mean, the Space Jam was just an... It's based on a fucking Nike advert. <laughs> <laughs> That's what yeah, the basis basically. was. Nike adverts that had Bugs Bunny in them. And, uh, I was yeah. say, you know what's funny is... briefly touched on the Space Jam movies during the Who Framed Roger Rabbit um, review that came out recently. They were talking about how like the majority of IPs that come out now are basically more sort of, look at what we own, rather than yeah. actually trying to be meaningful to what characters oh, yeah. are there. From what I've seen of Space Jam 2, it looks ghastly. <laughs> It has moments of okay, but yeah, that was it was essentially a look at all the crap we own. Like they do this big um, basketball game, and basically every single Warner Brothers property like comes into this, and it's just like, I mean, they have like the they have um, Pennywise the clown. They've got the the guys from um, A Clockwork Clock Orange. Just like this is a kids movie. What the oh. fuck are you doing? You just reminded me, actually, Ben. You know who's in Space Jam? The new the new Space Jam. Um, is uh, I know I know this was that a one- Don Don Cheadle's in it. I know that. <laughs> no, they, they did this wonderful thing where it's a blink and you'll miss it thing. But if you look in the background, they have Vanessa Redgrave's character from The Devils. Really? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah, it's only very brief, but like she's there in the full garb, just kind of cheering on. <laughs> is, she, w- is she like? Is she like all hunchbacked and everything? Yeah, 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 yeah. That is, uh... and, this, and, and you know what? It 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 made me laugh because of the fact that it's a fucking kids film. But it pissed me off so much that they were willing to put her in there as an owned property, but they want nothing to do with that. Film. Well, here's the thing. I reckon that probably <laughs> maybe that was a studio note because of it was like a big IP clash. Maybe they were just like to the to the filmmakers, just put any old fucking Warner Brothers shit in there so that people, you know why you know why you should do that? So people on the internet will make videos where it'll be a fun mm. the thumbnail will be like you know alex from a clockwork orange with a circle around him and the title will be like 25 cameos in space jam 2 you won't believe who we basically saw watch mojo Ex- yes yeah. exactly watch mojo and how fucking terrible they are and it, yeah. that, it, that's that's i bet you i bet you that's the entire reason for all those cameos because someone in a suit I said be it'll be it'll create uh, this uh, horrible word it'll create engagement because it'll make all these YouTubers mm, yep. watch the film and go make videos about all the great cameos in that scene oh look it's Pennywise oh look it's the Iron Giant oh look it's blah 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 and that will get people going this film must be good it has Pennywise in it for two seconds <laughs> you know it's <laughs> I don't know yeah. I, 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 yeah, I, I, I have a soft spot for the first Space Jam but I acknowledge it's not a good film like it's objectively well, and not. Well, that's the thing. You can you can look at look at what Dan and I review. I mean, that's ninety percent of it is the fact that you can look at it and say, we know that this is a crap movie, but it does still have those redeeming qualities. And 
The original Space Jam did have heart. It had a lot of that. But they took, with the new Space Jam, they took, like, all of that stuff and they're like, oh, well, people like this and people like that, but they left out that part. (laughs) Space Jam was the second film I saw in the cinema. Nice. uh, Oh, you want a fun fact? And this is really interesting. I, um, so, you know, in, um, uh, back in action where they go like the zipper thing and it's like, um, granny and then it's, uh, oh yeah, yeah. And it's Michael. uh, And then Michael Jordan's one of them, isn't he? As well. Yeah. Right. You want to know how he ended up in there? Was it, was it to do with like, wasn't that like unused footage from space jam? Basically. Yeah. Like it wasn't like, it was not, it was not one of those things where it was supposed to be there. There was no licensing involved in it. It was basically, okay, well, we've got this footage of Michael Jordan. Just toss him in there. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a good joke. It's a good, like, little throwaway gag. And I think, doesn't he, like, Daffy says something like, this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's like, basically, yeah. I think Joe Dante didn't like Space Jam, did he? We, and the whole no, film, he hated it. Yeah. He wanted Back in Action to be the anti-Space Jam. Which he succeeded in, I guess, for better or worse. Oh, yeah. Um, Absolutely. Brendan Fraser's in that as well, isn't he? Yeah, my, par- my partner just did a, himself. My partner just did a thumbs oh, yeah. up in the background when I said the words Brendan and Fraser. Yes, <laughs> nice. The mum, the mummy. Like another, Fraser, another so good 1999 yeah. film, The Mummy. The Mummy too. He actually, as he actually good. makes fun of himself, like being like he's whatever, whatever he his name is in the movie. I don't remember. Uh, I think Brendan BJ, Fraser. But then he, that's his name. Yeah, he ends film. up like punching himself. He actually ends up punching himself in the face. Uh, yes, I remember. Because DJ yeah. is is uh, the stunt double for Brendan Fraser. Well, uh, uh, apparently, I think that me, you, Triv, and my partner, I think we were the only ones who saw Back in Action in the cinema. By the sounds of it, because no one else did. <laughs> oh, it was so great. Well, and I just reviewed it, so that helps too. It was so fun. Such a fun movie. It's brilliant and it's very, very it deserves a re a recognition. It deserves a reawakening. A reevaluation. Sa- yes, that's what I was looking for, thanks. Yay, reevaluation. It's yeah. Woohoo A public but service. No, but they, public like, ser- for what public? <laughs> Uh, the New York Daily News, Insomniacs, just for the yeah. New York Daily. Yeah, exactly. I'm so glad we I talked. We're on a roof. I'm so glad we talked about Looney Tunes over that woman's harrowing story. Absolutely, that really says a lot about us, doesn't One... it? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're here to riff. No, no screwing around. Hey, who gave these kids coke? Yeah, exactly, and Seven Up. Have we accidentally landed in Larry Clark's kids? I no, don't know what that is. I'm sorry. You've never seen Larry <laughs> Clark's Kids? I don't oh, it's, think it's so. A, it's a horrific film. It's really bad. It's basically um, about... So the uh, the plot of the film is it's supposed to show kids as kind of who they actually are. Um, just sort of natural sort of things. But the main plot of the film is about a kid who um, has like underage sex with all these girls who are also underage. But it turns out he's HIV positive. And the big oh, thrust no. of the film, yeah, and the big thrust of the film is that he's going to go and have sex with this girl who doesn't know that he's HIV positive, and the other kids have to kind of try and get to him before she he gives this girl AIDS. And the whole film oh, is no. just this, yeah, it's like really serious drama shit. Yeah, but it's, it's grim it's properly harrowing. There's like, yeah, there's like rape and underage sex and oh. drug use and everything. It's banned in the UK. We, can, we don't. We're not allowed to have it. No, it's not. It's no, 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 no. It's not banned. It wasn't banned. What are you on about? It's not available on DVD, Blu-ray, or VHS yes, over yes, here. Yes, it is. My mate gave me a copy for my birthday. Let me double check. It might have come out recently, but as far as I'm aware, it hasn't had a release. No, I, here. I don't think. Cuts, no, kids wasn't banned. Kids wasn't banned over here. It might have been. It might have not have shown in certain areas, but it wasn't banned outright. Uh, we haven't really had a film that's been banned outright in since, well, since the f- the fifties, I think. <laughs> Silence or Dan Googles furiously. Uh, it was. It's never been unreleased. It was cut. What do you mean? It's never been. Wow. Un- never been unreleased. What you Sorry, about? it was never released uncut. <laughs> it's. It's only ever been released in the UK cut. Okay. So you're saying it's circumcised? Yes. Oh, I don't want to nice. look at circumcised kids. It's like. Is it? No, I thought it was like a. Cra- <laughs> it was like a thing, like a crash situation where it wasn't shown in certain areas. 
Because that's the thing with like. No, um, I must have got confused with my information. It's uh, it's not that it was. It I was don't know released, if it's, it just was released. I don't know if it's like this in America, but um, in the UK, British councils have uh, can enforce their own rules about film censorship. So the BBFC might say a film really? is. Yeah, so the BBFC might say a film is fine on, to, to be released, but if a council, like say like fucking Derby or whatever, decides they don't want to show it, then they have the right. So like when yeah. Life of Brian came out and there was obviously a big religious controversy over it, all the Mary Whitehouse and all that protesting, mm-hmm. and the BBFC, right. the BBFC had no problem with it. The BBFC said, yes, it's right, re- we're re- releasing it X, which was like the equivalent of an 18 back then, X uncut. Mm-hmm. But then certain councils opted out of seeing it. So like... Um, so like Derby wouldn't show it, Manchester wouldn't show it, Yorkshire wouldn't show it. So they do these like um, Life of Brian coach trips where if you wanted to see the film, like a lot of coach companies and like bus companies would end like cash in on it and be like, "We'll coach you out to cities that are showing the film." Oh my god! <laughs> and, uh, well, there was actually kind way. of a weird thing like yeah. There was actually kind of a weird thing like that here in the states. There was, I think it was a town in Oklahoma, I think that um so. You know, the Lightyear movie has, like, the lesbian kiss scene. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> they put yeah. signs up, and I, I don't, yeah, they put signs up that said, oh, we're going to try and fast forward through that part of it. Fast forward? It's just like, <laughs> for fuck's sake. Like, really? like, you're watching it, and then it Jesus. just goes fast all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden. Hang on, I'll just get the Blu-ray remote out. <laughs> oh, shit. I just, I just, I, oh, shit, an ad's coming on. It's on streaming. <laughs> oh my god! I can't, I can't do it. I didn't know there was a lesbian kiss in like yeah. Yeah, it's it's not anything gratuitous either. It's literally like there's a bit where um, they go to a surprise party and they open the door and it's literally almost like a peck, just a, and then they get on with the rest of the scene. It's not like it's even like framed right. as a, a I, deal or anything. I'm, I'm with you now. So basically, what what you've described sounds like what Disney always does, where they have that impression of being very woke and very liberal when it comes to same-sex depictions, but then they do it in the most half-hearted, mm. non-sort of ch- chicken way possible. You know, like in that um, yeah, basically in that 2017, like the Beauty of the Beast live-action film, where they had um, mm. what's 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 um Gaston or uh, Gaston's uh, little uh, mate LeFou, yeah, where Lefou. they made a big deal of saying, oh, we're going to make LeFou gay, he's going to be our first big gay character. And he does nothing. Nope. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they didn't even have him kiss anyone. It's <laughs> it's what I like to call chop-outable. Yeah, yeah. chop-outable for well, the Chinese market. Well, you have market. to release it in China. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. In China, Although, yeah. to, to their credit, as well as others too, for any of their employees that need abortion and they need like abortion services in states where abortion is illegal, they'll fl- they'll pay to fly them wherever they need to go to get them what they need. That's good. Yes, which is nice, but there is a double-ended thing because then you also have to reveal to Disney your own health status. That is which... true. That is true. Yeah, it's kind of a it's nice of them to offer that, but at the same time, do I, I, I feel I really like most want Disney to know what's going on? I feel on? like you have to tell most employers. I feel like if you're going to have something like that, you'd probably have to tell your employer anyway, wouldn't you? Dan, I mean, you'd have to tell them why you were being. You'd have to tell them why you were spending time off work for one thing. So you'd have to mention it eventually, wouldn't you? <laughs> You could probably just book vacation time if you had it. I mean, you know, if, was, if I was going in for an operation or something I'd, and I didn't want people to you, know, I'd just, I just book a couple I've of just days thought, Dan, going somewhere. You would have to tell them, yeah, wouldn't you? Because of, you would have to tell them, wouldn't you? Because of health insurance. Well, that and, like, for maternity leave, like, if you're doing, like, any kind of maternity leave, you'd have to say something. Yeah, you couldn't, you couldn't, it's not something you could really just keep, you couldn't really not tell your employer you were doing something like that, could you? Plus, as a woman, like, if you start to show, like, if you've got, like, a, you can't carry around a basket the whole time, you know? Yeah. Honey, you've been carrying that That's basket for the past three months, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing at all, I just really like my basket. Don't touch my basket. <laughs> Reacts yeah, well, it's such a nice basket. Well, uh, where can I find one? Well, Disney's based in California. <laughs> Get your own. Well, they're based in California as well, and California have said that they're gonna basically keep their the right to a, to abortion, aren't they? So that 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 figures yeah. as much. Yeah. I love that that we're talking about this, and like, there's kids smoking on screen. <laughs> And there's oh, one shit, crazy yeah. ass kid on a bike. I mean, that's... he's been doing cats since nine o'clock this morning. It's yep. not not that unusual a sight to me. I mean, I've seen that plenty of time. No, in fairness, you just have to go to our local city centre, and there'll be dozens of them. Yeah. Oh, 
They're usually better at it than these guys. Kids on bikes going as going uh uh in in eights or uh, or kids smoking or both. Could be both. I think both. I'm gonna go with both. Okay. Suppose they had the I don't care attitude of. That does not look like a house. No. What is the I don't care attitude of a pot smoker out of interest? Uh, they don't care about being good at doing wheelies on bikes. That's 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 what that ah, little right. sequence was meant to imply there. We'll have to wait for more tests. These are all real articles. Do you think this? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Marijuana, not enough data. <laughs> well, that kind of, well, that kind of defeats the point, doesn't it? Aren't you, aren't you meant to be showing a yeah. negative view of marijuana, but now you're saying that there's not enough data on it? Well, that that could mean one of two things. Could mean it's great, or it could marijuana mean it's Marijuana causes walking. It really doesn't. <laughs> Warning: Side effects of smoking marijuana may include walking. It really does. Drugs. It really doesn't. Just mean specific. The last thing you want to do is walk anywhere <laughs> for any space no, of time. No, it's okay. It, it's all right, guys. It's square drugs. You're gonna have to wear paracetamol. <laughs> oh, great. There's a random eye watching us. I'm scared now. Make it stop. So basically, oh, but hey, they accept Mastercard. Is this an advert hey. for a pharmacy? Whoa! Did you see that? Mm. That that was there was like a sub- subliminal shot of his hand giving the pills. Oh, oh wow. shit! It's, I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm not saying there was anything sinister behind it. It's just bad editing, <laughs> or just the quality of the film. No, Ben, we need to go deeper. <laughs> many shapes and colors. The drugs on the left are smarties. The drugs on the right are colorful. These are just a bunch of uh, tin foil that we put together. This is your brain. I'm not gonna lie. To you. This is your, this, it very delicious. This is your brain on drugs. Is is an egg? Oh, for nanny, no. Any questions? <laughs> I mean, I know it was a hard knock life, but jeez. <laughs> Give me a bike, punk. Fight, 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 fight. <laughs> Give me your lunch money, you dweeb. Uh, 25 quat <laughs> lose on the stripy t-shirt one. Trev, that's how Americans talk, right? Oh, absolutely. Good. Absolutely. <laughs> I know, I just wanted Every to Every single sure. one of us. Yes. <laughs> I was just default to my modern Sonic the Hedgehog voice. That's the... Well, that is your best option, honestly. Yeah. Stay in school, Ooh, the kids. Schaefer ambulance. Yes, you know that you're getting mm. in good hands when you have the Schaefer ambulance. Classy. Hey, they might even put my catheter in my IV in the right places this time. <laughs> Ooh, short shorts. Now that is a sign of a high quality track when you get short shorts. Where like is the this town? <laughs> Got, they've got square drugs, Schaefer ambulances, short shorts, kids are doing pot in the streets. Well, sign me up. Yeah, exactly. I've never seen people walk that much. <laughs> They're all paraplegics around you all way. <laughs> Ooh, sugar cubes. I do enjoy a good sugar cube. I give them to the horses all the time. Then the horses stare into yeah. space for a solid five hours. That's why the horses are fucked up. <laughs> Okay, what the hell is that next to the lamp? Like, that's really freaking that is, me out. That is a full-size resin cobra statue, and I want one. Look at that thing. That is amazing. It makes you permanently barefoot. That is, well, you know, better, better for your feet. I mean, it's better, you know. <gasps> now, you see, oh my ben, God. they are small, but the person in the background is far away. Small? Are they? Far away. What's this screeching guitar like the old, in the background? Uh, <laughs> uh, Black Sabbath. <laughs> Why do all of these people look like people I hung around with in high school, and none of them ever have that gave me any drugs? Because you bullied because they didn't you bullied think them they could all. Trust you. They thought you were a narc. Because <laughs> you you were the school bully. Me a narc? That's what you told me. Yeah, that, your that school, was true. Your school said you were a bully. Dan was a school. They did. They once oh. tried to. Dan was a school bully. To kick me out. He beat people up because the yeah fucking battered him, didn't you, Dan? <laughs> so <laughs> why was the cop in the back seat? Did he uh, did he do bad he's stuff too? <laughs> he's, uh, yes, he's he was a narc. <laughs> he's been ah. selling narcotta. <laughs> <laughs> wow, his disguise was so good. <laughs> The perfect crime. Yeah. Oh my god, the trees are on drugs now. 
<laughs> the trees never stopped being on drugs. Didn't they show this bit before? I think they yes. did. Who's really your friend? They're I also taking think this us back is the to last, the start. I think this is the last one on the set as well, so, you know, enjoy this while it lasts, ladies and gents. <laughs> Take note of all the stripes, those people are clearly on drugs. Using narcotics or abusing drugs. Oh my god, he's drinking RC Cola. No! <laughs> Talk about a life of crime. Oh man. You know, rooftop rooftops are known for their uh, drug habits. Well, they certainly are. By using them, we only deny ourselves the ability I mean, as a kid, I hung out on my roof, but no one could ever reach me because, you know, I grew up in a small town and there wasn't any tall buildings around me. We weren't allowed roofs in England. Thatcher's Britain, they took all the roofs away. You don't believe in pollution, do you? Including the water and I don't know why that strikes me as funny. <laughs> yes, laugh at our pain. The rain would come in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, big joke. Oh, the roof got taken away. Oh, yeah, the Englishman had to get rained on. Of course, rooftops you ever, weren't allowed you sat in winter? Yeah. It's actually still illegal to have a sat through a harsh winter? Now. It is. You have to pay £80 to the Roof Council. The Criminal Justice Act of 1991 prohibits it. <laughs> They'll just have warehouses all across the country where people's roofs have been repossessed. For some reason, I thought he was going to eat that fish. Hey, you know what? Cromwell did that to the poor monasteries and shit. Who's to say that Thatcher couldn't do it again? <laughs> oh, Oliver Everybody Cromwell, our re protector of England. Everyone remembers Thatcher's famous roof repossession speech in 1979. And I say to the people who own roofs, no, no. No. There comes a time when you have to say no. No more roofs. That is the end of the line. This is my factor impression, kids. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye. Owning a roof leads to a life of sin and depravity. First, they came for the milk. Then they came for the roofs. What and I did not speak up our because children. I was not a roof. And our children, children. and the children of them. <laughs> and then they came for their children. <laughs> their what? Their children. <laughs> Whatever would become Meanwhile. of their children. <laughs> Meanwhile, those and Tory fat cats were living in houses made entirely of roofs. The drugs that we give to the children. Oh my god. <laughs> there is a deadly virus and, and there I is no known to cure. my friend Peter Mandelson. <laughs> the roof, the roof, the roof is on fire. The roof is on fire. We don't fire. need no water. <laughs> there comes a time when you have to turn your back on all these nonsense. I was just saying, no. <laughs> just saying. No. We don't need no education. We need to protect it for the children. The only time in my life I've ever heard anyone go tee hee. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> oh my gosh, bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Magnificent bastards, I think oh, you meant. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> oh Jesus! Um, oh man! <laughs> oh wow, this is a great short, I'll tell you. <laughs> How did we get from kids giving kids AIDS to this? This is what this is what led to the poll tax riots. Yes. <laughs> they came out in the street in the hundreds of thousands. <laughs> They weren't Men, going to women let go. and children. They were all united <laughs> by their lack of roofing. They weren't going to let go. <laughs> that was a decent shot. I'm surprised they didn't put it through the back end. <laughs> users <laughs> equals users and losers. Yeah. Whoa! Is it the now last, there's is that a slogan. someone's last name? Is his name like Barney User Loser? Barney Loser. Sid Davis and production. And that's it. His name is user oh loser. shit! It's starting again. 
It's done oh, again, no. but we don't have to because we've done it. We so. should just we should just say everything we said in the first run through just again. <laughs> Verbatim. <laughs> Verbatim. <laughs> the same emotions and everything. <laughs> well, this was an entertaining evening of diverse conversation, wasn't it? Yes. I always think of um, <laughs> do, do you remember in on the hour they have the bit where it's like. Um, and what Thatch, Thatcher's voice, I mean, I was reminded of that joking on the hour when it's like, and later in the show, why Margaret Thatcher is to replace Sylvester McCoy as the new Doctor Who. And then it cuts to a line from her going, uh, there comes a time when someone else has to take charge, and I think now is the time for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to rewatch those at some point. It's been way well, too long. Well, re-listen. Re- re-listen. Yeah.